Okay, we're in section 7.3, and we're looking at the subject of capacitors. Capacitors are another fundamental building block in electronic circuits. Certain characteristics of a capacitor are similar to resistors and inductors. In other ways, they are unique. They are used in nearly every electronic system. They can be defined as the ability to store electrical energy in an electrostatic field. They are devices designed to have a certain capacitance. Their basic construction. A capacitor consists of two conductors called plates separated by an insulator called the dielectric. And if we look at this illustration, we can see here is one of the plates right here, and here is the other plate. And these two plates are separated by a piece of material called the dielectric. And it is technically an insulator, and various materials are used, and the materials that are used will impact the capacitance significantly. Notice we have two leads here. This is where it would be connected into the circuit. And down here, we have a uh, schematic symbol for a capacitor. Charges and electric fields. A voltage applied to the plates of the capacitor will charge the plates of the capacitor according to the polarity of the applied voltage. And so if I can draw a little circuit here, I'll draw a battery. And we'll label this as the positive terminal, and this is the negative. Let's see, I'll make that a little more. There we go. And then we'll come over here and draw a uh, capacitor. Looks kind of like that. And the charge on the capacitor will be the same as that on the supply. So if you have the positive here and it's connected to the, positive, the top plate of the capacitor, that side will be positive. The negative side will be connected to the bottom plate, and that side will be negative. So the capacitor will charge according to the polarity of the applied voltage. As the charges on the plate accumulate, current flow is reduced through the charging circuit. And so in the next two slides, we're going to look at the process of charging a capacitor. Now, as we look at this first image right here, we will note there is an applied voltage, there is a resistor. Uh, these two lines here are representative of the capacitor plates. And here we have a voltmeter. And you'll notice that the voltmeter is reading 0 volts, and the circuit is open. When the switch is closed, current flows from the negative plate of the power supply, or excuse me, out of the power supply, to the bottom plate of the capacitor. Electrons accumulate on the bottom plate. Electrons on the top plate are attracted to the positive side of the power supply, leaving a deficiency of electrons, i.e., a positive charge here. This accumulation of charges is called charging a capacitor. So these electrons are accumulating here. What electrons are here are moving over to the positive plate. And we're developing an electrostatic field in between the plates of this capacitor. And you'll note that when the switch is closed, this begins to develop. And you notice that the, the uh, meter is, is developing a charge. This does not happen instantaneously. Depending on the size of the capacitor and the current flowing in the circuit, uh, this can take um, varying amounts of time. But we have the process of the charge beginning. Uh, and keep in mind that the current is flowing from here to here, and there's movement of current from here to here. No current is moving through the capacitor. Okay, when fully charged, current stops moving, and the cap is charged. The charge cap now opposes the power supply. So here we have you know, the 10-volt supply here. We charge the capa capacitor, and now the polarity across the capacitor as, is as drawn here. And with a meter, we would measure 10 volts. And notice we have a strong electrostatic field that is contained in that dielectric material that we, mentioned, that we alluded to earlier. OK, the switch is opened. 
and there is no path for discharge. Okay. Now, uh, the, char the, the, the capacitor was charged here on this screen. Uh, the switch is open, uh, and we have this charge, and it is stored in this electrostatic field. There's no current movement, and there is no path to discharge this capacitor. The charge will remain indefinitely, as it has no discharge path. The charges eventually leak off due to imperfections in the dielectric. The time to charge the capacitor would vary with the size of the cap. And so uh, after the charge has taken place, here we see the voltmeter. Uh, we have the meter across the, the cap. We see the 10 volt charge, but in this case, there is no path for current or for discharge. Now, the next slide here, we're going to look at discharging a capacitor. And we'll be looking at this slide and the next one. And so you'll notice here, we have the, the strong charge across this capacitor. There is an electrostatic field that has been developed, but you'll notice the circuit is open. So there is no, the, the, the charge remains, it does not discharge. And you'll notice the voltage across the resistor is zero volts because the circuit is open. Okay, in this slide, what we're going to do, the switch is closed, providing a path for current flow. So notice the switch here is closed. Voltage is measured on the VOM. The electron movement is highest after the switch is closed and gradually discharges. So the moment this is closed, we have a large surge of current. We will measure 10 volts initially, but then as the cap discharges, you'll notice the meter is moving and the capacitor is discharging. The capacitor has completely discharged and no electrostatic field remains. So here, the cap has discharged completely over the passage of time and now the meter is reading zero and there is no electrostatic field. Units of measure. The unit of measure for a capacitor is the farad. Farad. A capacitor has a capacitance of one farad when a potential difference of one volt will charge it with one coulomb of electricity, i.e. one amp. So if we have this capacitor and we put one volt across it, and it is capable of holding one coulomb of electricity, i.e. electrons, we will say that it has one, it is a one farad capacitor. Now, generally values of a capacitor are in the sub-farad range, and I would say very, very sub-farad range. Uh, common values here is a 27 picofarad capacitor. Here's one that is a uh, 0.05 microfarads, and what does this mean? Well, when you say 27 picofarads, you're referring to 27 uh, times 10 to the minus 12, and 0.06 microfarads is 0.06 times 10 to the minus 6. So capacitors typically are in very small values, much smaller than one farad. Factors affecting capacitance. The physical characteristics of a capacitor determine its capacitance. Three primary factors determining the value of a capacitor are, and we're going to look at plate area, plate separation, and dielectric material. And so here we see the, uh, the plates, here we see the dielectric material, and here we see the separation. So let's look at these three factors in a little more in depth. First of all, plate area. Doubling the plate area will double the charge size if all other factors remain the same. So here we have the plate area. If we make this plate area larger, if we double it, we will double the size of the capacitor. Plate separation. If we double the distance between the plates, all other factors remaining the same, we will have only one half as much electrostatic intensity. So um, the plate size is directly proportional to the capacitance. If we separate them, 
the distance, if the wider the distance, we're going to have an inversely proportional relationship, meaning that uh, as, the, as the distances increase, the capacitance decreases. Finally, dielectric material. Permittivity is a measure of a material's ability to concentrate an electrostatic field, okay? The ability to concentrate an electrostatic field. And what we're going to find is that there are many different types of dielectric material. And uh, some are, are far better than others at concentrating an electrostatic field. So its ability to hold a, a field of, of, of an electrostatic field. Now, um, the concept of permittivity is similar to that of uh, permeability. Remember in permeability we talked about with uh, transformers that um, the core material had an ability to uh, transfer a magnetic field. Well, an electrostatic field and permittivity uh, is a similar concept. So permittivity is similar to permeability. Uh, permittivity is measured as dielectric constant K, and the value of capacitance is directly related to K. Now, um, there is a simulation at this particular uh, website. Um, please go there. I'm going to move over there um, at this time. <clears throat> and this is addressing factors affecting capacitance. And so what we have here is a simulation of a large capacitor. Now, what we're going to be able to do here is to change the dielectric material, change the plate area, and change the distance between the plates. And as we do that, we're going to see how is, how is the capacitance of this device impacted. So, uh, first of all, let's look at the dielectric material. We're starting out with uh, paper in between. And let's see as we change that, let's see, let's change to air first. Now notice with air, um, our capacitance is 44.27 microfarads. And air is a poor uh, dielectric material. Let's switch to paper. Notice it jumped up significantly to 154. To bakite up to 212. And if we go to uh, mica, you notice it jumped all the way up to 239. So mica was by far the best. Um, I'm going to leave it on paper just because I think it shows up best on the screen. Now let's change the plate area. So notice the plate area now is, is very large. Let's go in and change that. I'm going to take it down to the smallest I can take is 0.02 um, square meters. And the plate area, and I notice the, the value of capacitance is 30.99. And as this goes up, notice it jumped to 61, and then to 123, and finally to 154. So again, the plate area is directly proportional to the capacitance. And then finally, the distance. Now this is the distance in between the plates. And if we go in and change that distance, we're, notice we're going to, we're, we start out at 154 where the distance is very wide, and notice as I make it smaller that the capacitance goes up significantly. Notice at 0 .001 meters, the capacitance has jumped all the way up to over 3,000. Uh, when we have it at uh, 0.02 meters, notice it drops all the way down to 154. Okay, so this has served as a uh, start for uh, capacitors. We uh, will have another section here. Uh, this is completing 7.3a.